Since Microsoft has acquired GitHub for $7.5 billion, they have become more and more open to open source and they have consistently created more and more open source projects on GitHub. And currently they are maintaining over 3000 repositories, so I think this is just an incredible number. There are also some very big and well-known open source projects, but also some very small and niche projects, what I think is also very interesting. And I think it's definitely worth it to just scroll through the list of their trending projects on GitHub, because you can find some very interesting stuff there that will help you to become more and more productive and really get the most out of your Windows 10 machine. I've done that, so let me present you a list of six absolutely amazing open source projects of Microsoft. Keep watching. The first project I want to present you is Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code is very well known for many many years and it's one of the biggest open source projects of Microsoft. Visual Studio Code is an open source code editor for a variety of different programming languages and it's very interesting and powerful. It's very lightweight and efficient but you can also extend that with many many extensions, plugins and it's very highly customizable. So I really like that I'm using Visual Studio Code all the time. I have also used Sublime Text Editor and also some other code editors, PyCharm for example for my Python. But overall I think Visual Studio Code is just the best tool for me to write source code or to edit files or basically anything else because it's just nice and great. You can also extend that and integrate that with a lot of great developer tools I will also present you in this video. So if you haven't already checked out Visual Studio Code I can just recommend you guys to do that. It's one of the most favorite source code editors I know for all programming languages so it's really nice. Check it out. The next project is Winget CLI and that probably is not so well known because it's still at the very early stage and it's kind of a package manager for the Windows 10 operating system. So that probably is a bit similar to package managers we have on Linux operating systems. So when you know Aptitude or Pacman for example, the Winget CLI is somewhat like that. But it's still lacking some features of Linux package managers because every Windows application you need to install will have their own installation procedure where it probably will need some input from you or you need to accept something. So that is a bit different from installing packages on Linux and that is probably a bit of a downside of that project. But I think it's already very useful because you can search many many different applications and tools you want to just install on your Windows 10 system and it's much more easy to just open the Winget CLI, just type in one command to install an application uh, instead of just go to a home page, download it, extract the archive and then go through the installation procedure. You could also use that in automated scripts when you just want to install a bunch of tools on your new Windows 10 computer. You can just write a script with all these commands of the Winget CLI to install anything there and I think it's really nice. It's really nice to see Microsoft is following some of the good advantages of Linux operating system and wants to integrate similar tools and uh, workflows on the Windows 10 as well. So Winget CLI is very promising. It's still an early build but you can just download and test it and I can just recommend you guys to have a look at that. The next open source project of Microsoft is the PowerShell and PowerShell is also probably very well known because most people think it's just a replacement of the usual Windows command prompt but it's much more than that. The PowerShell is a cross-platform task automation and also configuring management framework and it runs on top of .NET so it's mainly object based and it also has some great functionalities like pipelining you probably will know from a Linux terminal or Linux operating system so that is also very useful. The PowerShell is very powerful when uh, working with automation tasks if you want to configure a Windows 10 or also a Windows server environment and you can probably just configure your server or your Windows 10 machine without any graphical user interface. You can also script and automate a lot of things. You could also use the PowerShell on a Linux operating system so that is also very useful. So I think it's really awesome you can do a lot of things with a PowerShell and it will also help you to accelerate your IT career when you know a lot of PowerShell and scripting especially when you're working with Microsoft's products like Windows Server or also the Azure ID so that is also very very useful to integrate PowerShell with scripting
scripting and automation task and it's an interesting tool for DevOps engineers as well. So I will also do more videos about that, about the PowerShell and how to work with it on this channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, then please do so. The next project is the Windows Subsystem for Linux and that is far most my favorite open source project of Microsoft. Why? Because I really love Linux as an operating system. I like the workflow working on a Linux shell and a Linux terminal. I am really used to it and I just had to use virtual machines in the past or I needed to install a Linux shell emulator on the Windows 10 operating system like Cygwin or anything like this. So. And both of these methods come with some disadvantages. A virtual machine is really big, it's not so well integrated with your Windows operating system and it's kind of slower and it also accelerates a lot of hardware resources on your machine. So a virtual machine is not the ideal solution. A terminal emulator instead is much more simple. You can just open a Linux terminal on a Windows computer, but it's just emulating a terminal. So it's really not like a fully virtual machine. It's lacking a lot of features you would expect from a Linux shell. So the Windows subsystem for Linux in version 2 really tries to combine those two things. So it is a full Linux kernel running in a virtual machine, but it's very small and efficient. It just boots up in one second and it's really well integrated with your host operating system as well. It's automatically creating mounting points or shared drives you can access just from your host and guest operating system. So it's really nice integrated, I think, and it's really fast and efficient as well. Therefore, I think Windows Subsystem for Linux in version 2 is just the perfect solution for anybody like me who just wants to use a Windows 10 operating system because of all the good advantages of that, but also wants to use Linux and work with the Linux terminal and just run some of uh, the favorite Linux tools. So I think that is a perfect solution. Just have a look at Windows Subsystem for Linux. If you haven't already done that, you have definitely missed something. And the next open source project, the Windows Terminal, just makes the Windows subsystem for Linux experience so much better. Because the Windows Terminal is really a nice application. It's a modern, nice looking and efficient terminal which also has very, very powerful features just like hotkeys or any tiling, window features and so on. But it's more than just a terminal to open your Windows subsystem for Linux. You can also use the PowerShell with the Windows Terminal. You can also use a Windows command prompt and also the Azure cloud shell. So that's really nice. You can do a lot of things with it. It's highly customizable. And I also did a video about how to make your Windows subsystem for Linux terminal just look awesome with Windows terminal and some great extensions. So if you haven't checked out that already, just do so. And Windows terminal, to be honest, is really my favorite terminal application even compared to native Linux terminals. And last but not least, we have the Power Toys. So the Power Toys are a collection of very nice and cool tools to extend the functionality and productivity on your Windows 10 operating system. I've recently tested and found this project and I really love this because I'm using that a lot and use the different features of that. It really comes with a lot of interesting tools like the color picker, the image resizer, um, the bulk rename editor for files, shortcut guide and the application launcher. So it's really nice and interesting. But for me personally, the most powerful feature of the Power Toys are the fancy zones. So this is really nice because it offers you some kind of a tiling window manager feature on your Windows 10 operating system. But it's not replacing your complete desktop environment like a tiling window manager on Linux is doing. It just adds some tiling window managers features to your usual Windows desktop experience. So you can still use any stacking windows, but it has a feature to create some buckets where you can place windows on your monitor screen. So you can create different fancy zones, move and drag them around, resize them and so on, and then you can attach windows to it. So the windows will automatically attach to the fancy zone and to the size. It's really nice, for example, when I'm doing live streaming or do this uh, screen sharing, I have my notes on the right side and on the left side, I have my screen share. So you can also use that in a multi-monitor setup. I have four monitors on my setup where I have created different fancy zones on every monitor and I just attach some uh, small applications to small fancy zones and some bigger ones to bigger fancy zones. You could also use that with a large 4K monitor and attach those different windows to uh, specific fancy zones. You have the complete overview of everything. You don't need to tap around windows anymore. So that's really, really nice. If you haven't already checked that out, then I can just recommend you guys to do that. The fancy zones are really, really nice. 
So these were my six favorite Microsoft open source projects I really like, but of course there are a lot more things there. So it's definitely worth it to just have a look at their GitHub page and scroll through their training projects and observe some very cool and interesting things there. I also think it's really nice to see Microsoft is becoming more and more open to open source and really maintaining cool and interesting things to the community. If you have a look at these repositories, the developers are also consistently exchanging with the community. You can report issues, bugs there and so on. And they really have a good plan to make these tools better and better. And I think that's absolutely the right direction Microsoft is heading to. That's the right way to make developers and power users happy. And I think that was the best decision Microsoft made the last past years. So thanks everybody for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, take care of yourself and I see you soon.